the ISS may be running out of time. But for its last significant purpose, the station may serve as a platform to create the future. This is the space race. And the best way to build a new space station was to begin with an old one, namely the ISS. Does the Axiom station resemble ISS version 2.0 or the next generation Space Phoenix? The ability of Axiom to build its new station on top of the current space station is its largest advantage. In 2026, Axiom will become the first and only private company permitted to dock its module to the International Space Station ISS. Each year after that, Axiom will deliver an additional module until they have essentially built a self-sufficient space station that can launch from the old one like a baby bird, leaving a nest. In this case, the nest is going to fall into Earth's atmosphere and burn up, which raises the question of how this one company succeeds. The unique aspect of Axiom is that they are somewhat like the offspring of private spaceflight firms with many of these new generation aerospace startups being founded by ambitious individuals eager to revolutionize society and rewrite the history of space travel. It's worth noticing that the individuals in control of the new space station are the same individuals who were in charge of the previous space station, as seen in the team roster for Axiom Space. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. The transition of the International Space Station from assembly to operation and commercial use was overseen by Michael Sufredini, a former NASA employee who held that position from 2005 to 2015. Dr. Cam Gafarian, a co-founder of Axiom, also played a significant role. He served as the head of NASA's second largest engineering services contractor responsible for training NASA astronauts and managing ISS operations. Moving down the list, you can see that the majority of Axiom's leadership comprises former NASA executives who have transitioned to the private sector. They now have the unique opportunity to build a brand new space station on top of the one they already helped create 20 years ago. Not that there's anything wrong with that, when discussing spaceflight, experience often gets undervalued as ambition gets overvalued. Nonetheless, this is an interesting observation. What's particularly intriguing about Axiom Space is that they are already making significant progress. While many other space station plans remain in the computer rendering stage, Axiom has already commenced the construction of its first module intended to operate in low Earth orbit. This puts them ahead of the curve, although it's more plausible. The launch of hab one the first module, is expected to occur sometime in 2026. The primary function of this module is to provide living quarters for four crew members along with additional space for small-scale research tasks. Notably, the Axiom crew quarters offer significantly greater comfort compared to the current ISS. One striking feature is the individual rooms for each Axiom crew member. Equipped with a touchscreen monitor, LED illumination, and a personal window offering a view of the Earth. These sleeping pods are reminiscent of Japanese capsule hotels in their design. These pods were designed by the French architect Philippe Starr, who was inspired to create a nest-like, cozy, and welcoming egg. The design incorporates materials and colors inspired by a prenatal cosmos, giving them a vibe reminiscent of Kubrick's space odyssey. According to Starr, the egg will also respond to the user's mood and biorhythm. The walls are adorned with hundreds of nano LEDs that change colors, providing a continuation of the view of the universe through the expansive windows. The Axiom module will dock to the forward port of the ISS Harmony module, becoming a permanent fixture of the space station. Moving forward, 
Axiom Hab 2 is expected to launch approximately one year after Axiom Hab 1. This second module will be similar in design to the first one and will effectively double the crew capacity in the Axiom segment of the ISS, accommodating up to eight people. Additionally, this module will provide an independent power source. These developments showcase the impressive progress that Axiom Space is making in the field of space, station development, and innovation. Next, an arm-style robotic manipulator called the Axiom Research and Manufacturing Facility will dock to the side port of HAB2 and begin forming an L-shape with the goal of providing access to low Earth orbit's unique microgravity environment. This platform aims to conduct innovative research, product, development, and manufacturing. Now, on to an exciting addition to the Axiom section, the Earth Observatory. This is essentially a glass dome that can accommodate an astronaut. To complete the Axiom station, a power thermal module will be added. This module serves not only as additional storage and payload space, but also, more importantly, as a connection to the segment's dedicated solar panel array. This connection will power the segment and manage climate control. With these four modules and one incredibly fancy window, the Axiom segment will be self-sustaining in terms of power and climate control. This Axiom Station concept ranks among the top four commercial space station ideas that NASA is providing financial support for. Additionally, Northrop Grumman and Blue Origin NanoRacks have secured development contracts to contribute to the creation of additional low Earth orbit destinations. As mentioned earlier, Axiom Space holds the exclusive privilege of developing their station in conjunction with the development of other stations. NASA is prepared to embrace the commercial space industry, but at the same time, they kind of need to make sure that their own interests are being given priority. No one knows how someone like Blue Origin is going to run a space station because it's going to be a brand new Femto satellite. The ISS is already stretched past its best before date and they are really looking at 2030 as the time when it will finally need to be decommissioned and deorbited. Literally, NASA is Axiom. We know that NASA and Axiom are going to get along great because they are the same people who have been in charge of the ISS for the past 10 years. They have traded in their public sector careers and gone private to carry that expertise into the next 10 years. As a result, it is clear that Axiom has been trusted enough to immediately begin working with NASA on board the ISS. In an interview earlier this year, the senior director of InSpace Solutions at Axiom stated, we're collaborating with NASA too. It's also not surprising that Axiom was the first private company to fly a crew of private citizens to the International Space Station aboard X-1 in April 2021 and they did the same mission again in May of this year with X-2, an eight-day privately funded excursion to the ISS. To accomplish this, Axiom is leveraging a partnership with SpaceX to use the crew DR, individuals traveling to space, and their activities there. The crew of X-1 included one experienced NASA astronaut serving as mission commander, as well as three paying customers a real estate entrepreneur named Larry Connor, Canadian investment CEO Mark Pathy, and Israeli investor Eitan Stibb, each of whom reportedly paid $55 million for a spot. Their week in space was occupied. Axiom has made a point to ensure that their private space tourists aren't just up there getting in the way or treating the ISS like a space hotel. Each very wealthy man was permitted to bring along research projects that were relevant to their particular interest and philanthropy in addition to 25 research experiments developed for microgravity and up to a dozen pre- and post-flight experiments. 
This is a way of bringing import experiments into space that may have never had the opportunity otherwise. X2 was a slightly more diverse group in addition to their former astronaut mission commander, this flight included John Young. Axiom actually learns a lot from these week-long trips to the ISS because they are using their customers as test subjects to observe how life in space affects what you might call normal people. So, astro-navigation. This flight also included Ali Al Carney and Rayana Barnawi, members of the Saudi Space Commission. So these private missions are actually helping to expand international access to space which is pretty cool. We don't know what will happen if you launch a person into space who is not operating at the peak of human capability. But if we're going to make the idea of commercial space flight a legitimate business, then we need to understand more about how a variety of human beings function. The term the right stuff was coined by author Tom Wolfe, who wrote the book on the Apollo program. As much as the Axiom Station is going to serve as a continuation of the ISS, it also needs to serve as the first space hotel, which is why the huge window is there. However, let's not pretend that this feature is anything other than a marketing gimmick intended to entice billionaires to spend vast stacks of money on trips to space so they can experience that view for themselves. If you enjoyed the video, Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Space Point for more content.